Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have another fantastic geometry problem for you guys today. Uh, this one was posted by the user Twilight Zone on the Art of Problem Solving Forum. And I don't know the original source, but it's a really fun problem. So if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. Alright, so now I'm going to go over the solution. So we have a triangle ABC uh, with in center I. M is the midpoint of side BC and N is the midpoint of arc BAC. Um, and we let the line CA and the line IM meet at point P. And we want to show that CI is parallel to NP. Okay. So I solved this problem using projective geometry. So I'm sure there's um, a more elementary way that doesn't use projective geometry, but I looked at it for a while and I couldn't find it. And projective geometry is still my favorite way of solving problems. Um, so I'm gonna show you how I did it. So it's hard to kind of get a handle on point P in this problem. What does it mean to be the intersection of the line AC and the line MI. Um, so I'm going to get to that, but before I do that, um, whenever you have um, an in center and a midpoint of a side, uh, it's useful to draw the line AI and let it meet the circumcircle at a point. So I'm going to draw a line AI and I'm going to let it meet the circumcircle at point D. And then we know that D has to be the midpoint of arc BC. And that's because AI is an angle bisector. And, I've, and as I've said many times on my channel, uh, equal angles intercept equal arcs. So D is the midpoint of arc BC. And then not only that, by symmetry, since D is the midpoint of arc BC, and M is the midpoint of side BC, and N is the midpoint of the bigger arc BAC, then D, M, and N have to be collinear. And both of these two steps, I feel like I've done it probably like three or four times on my channel throughout different kinds of problems. Um, okay, so where do we go from here? So like I said, point P is the tricky thing because it's hard to kind of get your head around what's the intersection of MI and AC. But what we can do is um, by projecting through P onto two different lines, we can almost essentially get rid of P from the problem. So I'm going to show you how we do that. So I'm going to let line AD meet NP at a point E. Okay. And I'm going to take point P and I'm going to project it through um, four points. Um, so I'm going to project it onto the lines ED and ND. Okay. So if we look at the four points N, M, F, and D, and we project them through point P and we see where they inter intersect line ED. Well, PN intersects the line at point E. Um, PM intersects it at point I. Uh, PF intersects it at point A. And PD obviously just intersects it at point D. Okay. But now we kind of have point E to, to worry about. So we started with point P, which was hard to get a handle on, and now we kind of have point E, which is still a little bit hard to get a handle on, but I'll show you how eventually we're going to remove that from the problem. Okay, um, so we have these two different cross ratios. Um, now, first I'm going to, I'm going to work on this one a little bit. Um, so like I said, what we can do is, so I think I've done this once on my channel before, but if you have four points um, on a line and another point on a circle, you can project them through those four points back onto the circle. So I'm going to use point C in this case, and I'm going to project these four points onto the circle. And I'm going to call the circle omega. Um, so if we start with point C, and we take those four points and project it onto omega. Uh, N stays at N, obviously. Um, M goes to point B. F uh, goes to point A. And D goes to point D. So we have that these two cross ratios are equal. Okay. And, and obviously we can project through C because C lies on the circle itself. 
uh, otherwise it wouldn't necessarily be true. And now I'm going to try to work on this cross ratio. Uh, so again, I'm going to try to project onto the circle. Um, but really, I want to try to get rid of point E. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to project through point N onto the circle. And when I do that, point E will disappear. Um, okay, so I'm going to let line EN intersect the circle at G. And if I and also um, I'm going to let line IN meet the circle at H. Um, and now uh, when I project the four points E, I, A, and B through N onto the circle, um, I get that, uh, so E goes to point G, um, I, if you connect it to N, goes, through point, goes to point H. That's why I constructed point H. Um, a obviously stays at point A and B stays at point D. And if you've seen my video on mixed to linear in circles actually, you'll notice that H is actually the point of tangency with the A mixed to linear in circle, although I actually never end up using it in this problem. But it would be really interesting to see if any of you have a way of solving it, which uses the fact that H is the tangency point of the mixed to linear in circle um, with omega. Um, so if you do find that, uh, feel free to post it in the comments. Uh, I'd love to see it. Okay, so I worked on both of these two cross ratios, and I've shown that uh, NB, NBAD is equal to the cross ratio GHAD. And uh, believe it or not, using the fact that these two right-hand sides are equal, uh, that means that AD, uh, HN, and BG have to be concurrent. So BG actually has the pass through point I. So I'm gonna actually prove that here. Um, and I actually didn't even know this fact until I solved this problem. But if you have two cross ratios, apparently with, with the points being on the circle and the right two are the same points, then it just so happens to turn out that that means that AD, which is um, the segment connecting these two, has to be concurrent with uh, B, G, and H, N. So here's my proof of it. Um, like I said, once we projected four points onto a circle, uh, we can then actually project them back onto a line. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take each of these two cross ratios and I'm gonna project it back onto the line A, B. Um, so I'm gonna start so I'm going to let BH intersect line AD at J. Um, and I'm, I'm constructing this point just to prove what I said about the, th the three being concurrent. So I'm going to start with um, this cross ratio NBAD. Uh, and I'm going to project it through H uh, onto the line AD. Uh, so if we do that, um, if we take the four points N, B, A, and D, and we project them through H, um, N um, obviously goes to point I, if you're project, because that's where H, N intersects the line A, D, and B goes to point J, and A and D stay at A and D. Okay, so, so this is the cross ratio I get when I do that. And now I'm going to take this cross ratio, GHAD, which has to be equal to NBAD, and I'm going to project through point B. So you'll see how this works out. So if I project uh, GHA and D through point B, um, G, what does G go to? Well, we haven't labeled it, but it's whatever the intersection of BG would be with AD. Um, so I'm just going to write BG intersect AD here. Um, and then if we project through, if we project point H through B, uh, we'd get J as before. And if we project point A, uh, A just goes to A and B just goes to D, right? So, we, so that means that these two cross ratios have to be equal. IJAD and this intersection point JAD 
And so it's very easy to see from there. I'll let you, you think about it yourself, but it's very easy to see from this that I has to equal BGAD, the intersection of BG and AD. And so basically that means BG, uh, AD, and HN have to be concurrent at point I. Okay, so now it looks like we're really close to solving the problem. Um, so we want to show now that CI is parallel to NP. Um, and so really, um, I'm, this whole proof, I kind of wrote it in reverse of the way I actually solved the problem. But so the way I actually solved the problem was I was trying to show CI is parallel to NP and I got a certain angle condition and the angle condition told me basically that B, I, and G had to be collinear. So now I'm kind of working backwards and I'm gonna show you how we use the fact that B, I, and G are collinear to prove that C, I is parallel to NP, okay? And I'm gonna do it by showing that angle P, G, I is equal to angle G, I, C. So if that's true, that would mean they would ha both have to be parallel. And it's really an angle chase. So I'm gonna show you, but the fact that we know that B, I, and G are collinear means that angle P, G, I is, is angle N, G, B. So that's kind of the key here. So I'm gonna write it out. So angle P, G, I is equal to angle N, G, B, and that's half the intercepted arc, which is half of arc B, N. Okay. And now I'm gonna to try to calculate angle G, I, C. Um, so angle GIC, it's going to be the sum of these two exterior angles. So it's going to be angle um, uh, CBG plus angle uh, BCI um, because the exterior of an angle in a triangle is the sum of uh, the other two angles in the triangle. Um, and angle C, CBG, which is obviously the same as angle CBI, but that's half of arc CG and half of arc CG is a quarter of arc AC. And that's because G has to be the midpoint of arc AC. Okay, so angle CBG is a quarter of arc AC. And then by the same logic, angle BCI is a quarter of arc AB. So if you add the two, arc AC plus arc AB is arc BAC. So this is a quarter of arc BAC. Um, but N is the midpoint of arc BAC. So a quarter of arc BAC has to be um, half of arc BN. Um, so both angle PGI and angle GIC are equal to half arc BN. Okay. So if they're equal to each other, so angle PGI equals angle GIC, well, those are alternate interior angles. So that means that PG has to be parallel to CI, or in other words, uh, CI has to be parallel to NP. Uh, so this is a really tricky problem and I really enjoyed it, um, but I'm sure there's ways to do it without projective geometry. So if you have another way to do it, uh, feel free to post it. Um, so as always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks everyone.